Hi there, this is Karim again with Pine to Haas series. In this video, we will talk about plotting. While TradingView is a charting focused platform and Hasbot is more focused on trading, PineScript and Hasscript are very similar in their plotting capabilities. If you are converting the PineScript to Hasscript, it can be frustrating to adapt to some of the new rules of how plotting works. Thankfully, there are just a few things that you need to know. In this video, I'll go over how plotting is done in Hasscript some important differences and similarities between the two languages. First, we will look at the basic plot function and its parameters and rules, plot modifier functions, then we will talk about other elements of the chart, like price candles, trading signals, and how to plot some of them, including shapes, candles, and so on. And in the end, I will show you a few quick helper functions that are handy to use for some common tasks. Let's start with the basic plot command. Here I have a simple RSI that I'd like to plot under the price graph. As I type plot, it asks me for chart ID number. For now, let's just put one here. We'll talk about chart IDs soon. Then it asks for a line name. It's a required parameter. Let's call it RSI. Then we must give it a number or an array. We will input our RSI variable here. Ctrl S to save and Ctrl R to run a quick backtest. So far, the plot function is very much the same as in PineScript, except here we have two additional required parameters, the name of the plot and the chart ID. So chart ID number refers to the graph area where you want to plot your line. In PineScript, you can only plot on one chart, whether it's the main price chart or a separate one. In Hascript, you can plot on multiple charts in the same script. The main price chart is numbered as zero. This is equivalent to the overlay setting set to true in PineScript study or strategy line. The positive numbered charts are added below it and negative numbered charts are added above it. For example, when I plot on chart one and chart two, they will appear in that order below the main chart. And the opposite for charts minus two and minus three. Chart minus one is reserved for trading signals. We'll look at signals plotting a bit later in the video. Now would be a good time to look at chart set options. We can use chart set options to make our charts bigger or smaller and give them a name. For example, let's call plot two something like relative strength indicator and make it 200% its original size. And make plot one to be 50% of its original size. When we were typing the plot arguments, we also had an optional parameter which we didn't use. It can be either a color or a line option subject. Let's first talk about color. There are three ways to represent color in Hascript, just like in PineScript, with very small syntax differences. We can use built-in color names like orange, blue, aqua, and so on. We don't have to type color dot before the color, we can just type the color name. You can see the full built-in color list in the IntelliSense. We can also input the color as a string, either in the hex or in RGB format. We can also change the opacity of the color. For constant colors, we can just enter a number between 0 and 100 in parentheses right after the color. For the hex format, we can add two integers between 00, 0 and ff. And for RGB, we need to add one more argument between 0 and 1. We can also use a line options table instead of a color. In line options, we give our line additional properties like style, decoration, color, line width, z order, and whether or not it affects the y axis scale. Let's create a line options object and try using it instead of the color here. Remember, when entering optional parameters selectively in Hascript, we must wrap them inside the curly brackets. Or alternatively, we can simply enter everything in order, giving nil to the parameters which we don't want to change. One important note for the colors here. Each line name in the plot is tied to one color. 
If we input a variable color into a regular plot command, it will plot the line using the first color value that it gets. For example, To plot a line with a color variable, you can use this custom command plot var color. The link to this code will be in the description. It's made to imitate TradingView's multicolored line plotting. It even has this somewhat misleading backward color extension, just like TradingView does. Alternatively, you can just plot the line with the base color and then add the color info using plot signal bar function. If you want to stop one line and start a new line, you can put the plot functions in conditional statements. But if your plot object resumes multiple times, then it will drag the line from the first segment to the other ones. To separate this, you should assign different line option IDs to them. Every time you change a line options ID, it will stop and restart a line. There is no direct alternative to PineScript's line new in Haascript, but I'll post in the description a custom command which is similar to it, and also a couple of other helpful comments for the plotting. So to recap so far, the main things to remember are 1. In Haascript you can plot on multiple charts, including the main price chart inside the same script with positive number charts going below the main price and negative chart numbers going above it. The main price chart's number is zero. Each plot object has a unique ID and is tied to the line name, color and chart ID, which means each plot object must be of the same color. If you want to use a variable color, you can use plot signal bar or plot var color. Four, using unique line names will allow for multiple colors to be displayed while adding unique line option IDs will split the lines into line segments. 5. Line options objects are like line set functions in Pine, in the sense that you can use it as a preset with a style, decoration, width, color, and so on. Now let's move to plot modifier functions. This category of functions takes a plot object, usually a line, and turns it into something else. For example, plot bars. It turns a line or a segment into a collection of bars. We can assign our plot object to a variable and then use it as an argument here. The contour or outline color is determined by the color of the plot object. And if you want to fill the inside of the bars, then you can specify a fill color in the plot bars parameters. I won't go into too much detail for each function from here on out, since these functions are very intuitive and you can use IntelliSense suggestions as a guide. I'll just show you the arsenal of key functions for your toolbox. Plot circle. Converts the line, i.e. plot object, into circles. Like with plot bars, the contour color is taken from the plot object and the optional fill color is determined by the plot circle color parameter. Plot histogram. Turns the line or a segment into a histogram. The bars with decreasing values are filled, while rising bars are empty. But we can choose to fill all bars and we can set the color of the negative bars. Plot bands. Works like Pine's fill function. Just enter the two plot objects and the color you want to fill in between. As mentioned before, you can change the opacity just by entering it in the parentheses after the color name. Plot Cloud This is a really neat function. Similar to plot bands, except that here the color of the cloud is determined by the upper line. So if the lines cross, the color of the cloud will change automatically. Lastly, if you want to have a line that changes color when it crosses a certain value, then you can use the plot double color function. We just give it the plot, choose the threshold value, and select the second color. It's not the most customizable function, but if it fits your situation, it's perfect.
Before going into the next category of plotting comments, let's first talk about the things that are already displayed on the graph by default. First, of course, is the price chart. If we want to change the price presentation, for example, to Heikinashi or to close line, we can do so in the script default settings on the left called default price data style. We can also change the main interval of the candles, which is the main interval of the script. Now let's see how trading events are displayed. Let's add a couple of simple trading commands and run a backtest. Once we have some trading commands in our script, they will be automatically reflected by the signal bars above the price chart and the order circles on the candles. If we have a buy signal, we have a green signal bar above the candle where the buy signal is triggered. Additionally, we will have a circle on the price chart indicating where the buy happened. The difference between these two is that the signal bar just says that we had a buy attempt, while the circle means an actual field order. There are a few cases where you could have a signal but no field order. First of course is sending a limit order which is not filled and then got cancelled. Or as is the case here, the trading engine stopped the order before it was sent to the exchange because the bot was already in a long position. That's how the managed trading comments work. But we'll talk about trading in the future video. Chart number minus one is reserved for this automatic plotting of trading signals. So we cannot use that chart for our plotting. Now let's look at how we can plot these and other elements that aren't simple lines. We can plot shapes and text using plot shape function. It's pretty similar to PineScript's plot shape, although there are two big differences. In Pine's plot shape, the text must be constant. If you want to have a variable text, you will need to use a label function. But in Haskell's plot shape, you can use variable strings. For example, let's try to indicate some candlestick patterns with plot shape. First, let's assign the OHLC functions to shorter variables. Then we will use Haas candle pattern finder. And when it finds a specific pattern, we'll set our variable string to the name of the pattern and set the color to red for bearish and green for bullish patterns. When there is no pattern, we will set the variable to an empty string. Ctrl S, Ctrl R. We could also use another function here, the plot signal bar that we already saw before. It would like the text component, but we could assign different colors to different conditions and this would stand out more than the text above candles. I like to use multiple rows of plot signal bars when I have, for example, four or five different rules that must be met to enter a trade. Then each row shows me where that specific rule is met and where they coincide. Plot signal bar can also be used in debugging to catch some kind of condition. It's a pretty versatile function. It's one of my favorite functions for plotting. If this looks like too much clutter for you and you prefer minimalistic style charts, you could use Mark Candle instead. Personally, I rarely use it. I think it's too rigid, although it may be updated in the future. To speed things up a bit, I'll just show you some other less popular comments. I rarely use them, but it's good to know about them. There's the chart add axis label, which can be used as a substitute for the label on the last bar in Pine, since there is no bar state in Haskell. There's the plot vertical line and plot vertical zone functions. They accept a Unix timestamp for location, so you can either enter a timestamp or just put them in a conditional statement and enter time function for the location, which will return the Unix timestamp during the condition. There's also the plot price. If you want to have an additional price graph apart from the main price, you can use plot price. For example, you could display Heikinashi graph or some other type of graph or a price graph of a different interval or another coin. Next, we have plot signal enums. It plots signal enums in the same style that we saw automatic trading signals on chart minus one. 
This is used for example if you want to visually compare different strategies to see their entries and exit locations and so on. Helper functions The last category of plotting functions will be the quick helper functions. These are functions that will get something done quickly, but they often lose in flexibility to the regular functions. All of them can be replicated with some TA and or combinations of the regular plotting functions. There's the plot B bands chart, a simple function for plotting Bollinger bands, envelopes, and similar indicators. You just need to input a chart number and three values to plot, the upper, middle, and lower lines. Next up is plot by cell zone. It is used to quickly plot an oscillator with an oversold and an overbought zone. There's also plot histogram signals. Plot horizontal zone. This function plots, you guessed, horizontal zones. Make sure to add the opacity in the parentheses after the color when using this. There is also the plot pivot. To see the pivots highlighted, you just need to specify the look back and look forward periods. Then there is plot volume. As the name suggests, it plots volume of the current market and time frame. There is also a whole bunch of helper functions called easy functions. They have very few required parameters and they will perform the TA and plot the result automatically. For example, this code could be replaced with a single line, like easy RSI. It even added the overbought and oversold lines automatically. Also, easy functions output trading signals. For example, if I try to log the output, it gives a series of trading signals on each candle. This can be used in plot signal enums or in trading comments. Easy functions are usually used as training for the new scripters. But even for more experienced traders, easy functions are a great way to explore different indicators and combinations. So I definitely recommend taking a look at the easy indicators collection. Now let's recap the second part. The signal bars right above the main chart indicate trading signals and chart number minus one is reserved for that. Red, green and yellow circles on the price chart indicate field orders. The plotting commands in Hascript can be mostly divided into a few categories. First, there is the main plot function that we use to plot lines and line segments. Then, these plot objects can be used inside plot modifiers, which can turn those plots into things like histogram, bars, circles and so on. Next, there are functions to plot special objects, like plot price, plot shape, plot signal bars, etc. Lastly, there are quick helper commands, like plot p bands chart, plot pivot, plot volume, and a big collection of easy indicator functions. To my knowledge, almost anything you can do in PineScript in terms of plotting, you can also do in Hascript, with two exceptions, gradients and tables on the graph. As for gradients, it's not a very common thing to see, and maybe if it becomes more popular, they will be implemented in Hascript as well. As for plotting tables, there's something even better in Hascript. You can print anything directly into the log of the script. Also, you can use the custom report function to add any kind of info to the top of the logs at the end of the backtest. It's a handy tool. Usually it'd be extra trading metrics, but it could be anything. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments or in the Haas official Discord channel. I hope this overview of plotting in Hascript was useful, and if it was, please give it a like. This is it for this video. Happy trading!